Okay, um, official welcome to the um, uh, today's webinar series. Uh, it's the supervisor standard work. Uh, and really the angle that I am uh, talking through today is the how it applies to the continuous improvement world uh, or the view of the supervisor standard work through the CI lens. Um, webinar presentation looks at the elements of supervisor role um, through the continuous improvement lens, as I just said. Really, the intent is to build awareness of what are the key elements of a supervisor standard work and how the activities and processes must go in parallel uh, to make the supervisor standard work or supervisor leadership standard work effective. Before we start looking at those elements and activities and processes, let's talk about what a, what a leadership standard work is. So really, it's a, it's a set of behaviors um, with expected standard activities, routines, processes to drive a culture of doing the right things at the right time at the right level of organization. Um, it is part of lean methodology. I know I said continuous improvement, but lean is, is a approach for continuous improvement. Um, and you may see leadership standard work or supervisor standard work also show up in the performance management banner. Uh, but the standard work term itself, it belongs to the lean side of things. So uh, what I will cover, uh, definitely low role of the supervisor, the three elements which are key, uh, and that's which kind of drive the continuous improvement uh, if done right. Uh, typical supervisor workflow processes uh, involved in anywhere you have a supervisor usually. Uh, and then what are the supervisor evaluated, non-evaluated activities uh, in general? And if supervisor must do a non-supervision work, what should be the expectation? Finally, tie it back to the bigger picture, how this uh, fits into the lean daily management or condition world. Really, the, the two things that I've listed there are the two other main elements which go in parallel to ensure the continuous improvement and sustainable value is being generated through uh, the supervisor standard work. Okay, so let's look at the three elements. Uh, execute the plan safely and efficiently. That's the one I think most people know. Um, uh, the expectation is that supervisor has uh, a plan that they must execute and they must do it safely and they must meet the productivity numbers. So I think everybody everybody knows this. The two uh, that I have after are the ones that usually get lost in the in the bigger picture or in the daily firefighting. Um, one is the driving stability uh, towards improvement in productivity. So what does that mean? It means that we need to be consistent in driving the productivities that we have. Sometimes you have a really good shift. Sometimes you have a really bad shift. That is telling me that focus is probably not there uh, in the leadership or, or in this case, in the supervisor uh, role. We haven't, we haven't put in the either the expectation or the tools or the skills for that supervisor or the processes are not there for us to drive consistency. So we have to then go back to the center work and see if, if we can make improvement there. Finally, there is an expectation from a supervisor to drive the performance of their crew higher the ideally speaking the end result is that you've got um, majority of your people uh, in your crew at the same level as as your skill uh, and and this becomes important to drive not only consistency but then do the uh, uh, make sure that you have the cross team collaboration working properly so let's look at some of the details of each one of these. So executing the plan safely and efficiently, what does that mean? Uh, supervisor role is to allocate resources uh, to execute uh, daily work or shiftly work, whatever they, they may have, based on a set plan and priorities. So they, they are actually are not in charge of creating the plan, uh, which is usually a confusion when I first uh, show up in one of the, uh, in any, any operations. Um, even though they have a daily um, daily execution um, set of activities or execution plan in that sense that they, they are trying to say who's going to do what, um, or what activity is going to happen, or uh, who's going to use w uh, what resources. So that, that kind of plan is done for the shift of the day by supervisor, but they, are being, they usually are given a plan, a set of priorities that they must work towards. So that's very clear that we identify that up front. Um, the other part, uh, which comes under the executing the plan, they must review active work every shift to assess areas of opportunity. So when they are in field or, or at the place where the work is being done, they must assess if the work is being done is up to a standard. 
all right, or up to an expectation. And if it's not, then that's an opportunity. So then we need to understand, is that because um, things are going worse than expected? So what are the reasons, root causes? Um, or if things are going better than expected, so then what is happening? And we'll talk about later a uh, bit in the stability element, uh, what that looks like. Uh, finally, assess the current conditions and respond to any shortcomings. So this is part of the same daily uh, execution of the plan. Um, the idea here should be that before you go start working, the supervisor must identify a plan A, plan B, plan C, whatever is required uh, needed based on the conditions that they're about to go into. So if they know the conditions may change during the shift, there's a possibility, then the plan B should be ready. And there should be no uh, time lost uh, or opportunity lost for the crew to not know what the next step is or supervisor to stop work and then go assess the conditions because that will take time and it will cause obviously uh, inconsistency in your in your plan. Uh, one of the other things which is kind of related to the executing the plan is the visiting future work uh, areas or future work designs or future work activities that might be happening. And, and if it's not visiting, then it's about um, brainstorming or thinking about them. This is where they contribute in making the plan. So there is a contribution that they have back to their, their superiors or their uh, leadership level who are in charge of making the plan is to say what they're about to get into, what are the conditions, uh, what they can expect, uh, and so forth. In the second element, driving stability towards improvement in productivities, um, what are the key, key things expected of a supervisor would be that they assess the work being executed against set standards. So standards in this case could be procedures, could be expectations, could be uh, limits, could be specs um, that are given for each activity which is happening in, in that shift under, under his supervision. So when a supervisor visits uh, a work area or a crew member, uh, they need to keep an eye on what work has been done and what is the expected standard. So not, they need to know that standard or have that standard easily available with them to be able to assess against it. And really this is where they're going to start looking at what issues or opportunities may exist. And if they are, what are the possible solutions? Because that, there's a time right then and there to then start brainstorming five whys, asking questions and say, is this something we can fix? Is this something which we should have seen coming? Um, is the problem with the with the standard itself? Maybe the standard it doesn't cover all the situations. In that case, we need to improve upon the standard. Um, it, what if it's uh, it's an opportunity to improve, or you know, we're we're doing things which are better than expected? In that case, um, we need to figure out is that because we're cutting corners. Or is that because we actually have found a better way and we need to improve the standard? So all that happens here. Um, implement quick solutions if they address the root cause. It's very important um, that supervisor uh, does not implement any solutions if the proper root causing hasn't happened, because that's not part of their role. Especially if the if the um, if the uh, problem solving of the root cause does not belong in the circle of influence. It might be a different department. It might be a higher up leadership level who has to get involved to solve because it requires different teams to come together to solve the problem properly. In that case, uh, they need to lead the containment action for the firefighting. So something went wrong. They're going to try to fix it, bring it back to a workable condition, but then escalate that problem to the right level to get it addressed uh, so problem can be resolved properly. Driving performance of the crew. Um, this happens by them reviewing the new procedures, changing procedures, changing standards. Uh, if they were containing some firefighting, if they were doing some solutioning or root cause in the previous step, then the lesson learned need to be communicated to all the crew, all the teams. They need to be uh, communicated um to the cross shifts and, and to their higher up so everybody's aware of it uh communication should happen through uh, something called gamba walks or standard work audits or lineups so those, those are some terms from lean gamba walk is really a process where a supervisor walks the value stream or walks all the different areas where the business value is generated so if we are in a floor uh, like in a, in a food plant Every time something is being made in new or is being worked upon, that's where the value is being generated. So they walk that area and they start to see 
if things are happening the way they should happen. And if not, they're going to take the opportunity to, to either coach somebody or learn uh, how to make things better. And the Gemba Walk is really having those conversations, providing the opportunity for the supervisor to mentor and coach uh, their crews. Standard work artists are similar, but you're picking a, a specific area of concern and going and auditing that. And then lineups we talked about would be would be your first thing in the morning happens every shift for every day where you get your crew together and you line up the work so there's a good opportunity to communicate what they're uh, expected to do how what conditions they're going in, in there and if the problem was identified last shift, the most solutions are there or if the solutions were put in place a proper feedback to the crew should happen at that level Problem solved through up and across communication. So this is very important. Um, if the problem was solved by a, a supervisor, then they must across communicate to their their cross shifts, uh, the other supervisors. Um, and if it was uh, identified and not solved, they must be escalated to the right level above or even two levels above through the proper chain of communication. So let's now look at the uh, workflow processes uh, of a supervisor. And this is typically what you would expect in any uh, area where you have supervisors. There are three main breakdowns of the um, of the time. Uh, so start of shift to the pre-on-field work, then there's the on-field work, and then there's a closeout basically post-on-field to the end of shift. And again, we can subdivide those three um, uh, time intervals into three main processes that must happen. So I'll walk through them uh, very quickly here. Um, you, we must prep um, for that lineup meeting where you're going to start assigning the resources to do the to the jobs that you've been given. So to execute the plan, what does that include? Is like what do I have to do based on the conditions I have? What are my what is available to me? Uh, what work areas? What, what equipment, what people, what other other materials, and then what can I do best with it, right? So that's the idea of that, that prep happens quickly, 15 minutes, sometimes half an hour, depending on what kind of operations you're in. Then there is a alignment between different departments to make sure that you're not going to be um, each other's way um, before you actually do the lineup or do the execution of the work to the team and say who's going where. Um, the simplest example is if you're if you're about to use the equipment, which is also being uh, is being lined up to being maintained by the maintenance department. You need to know now before you go all uh, to the work floor or to the underground mine if it's a mine, and then lose time and lose opportunity. Right. So a quick alignment at, at that level is important. Then you actually do the lineup uh, where you're sitting down with your crew, telling them what the works are, what the plan is, plan Bs are, what the expected targets are for the performance, um, what to watch out for, what are the safety risks, and all, all that good stuff, right? Uh, then you actually go to the on-field work. Here, the first thing of prep on-field work is for the supervisor himself. So this is not the prepping for the lineup. This is to say, what do I need before I go to the floor or to the uh, work field? Um, this could include he needs to grab some uh, he or she needs to grab some gear. They may need to um, get some some technical drawings, some some instructions, um, some special piece of equipment which they need for that day, which may, might need to get checked out. So it goes in there. Then they go to the on-field work where a lot of this stuff that we we went through last few slides happened. They go assess the work conditions, the coach and mentor. Uh, the crew, uh, the root cause, the firefight, all that happens in on-field work. Uh, an element on, on the field work usually includes some kind of reporting. Um, the, the one that I've seen most people do every day would be the time sheeting or some kind of um, payroll input. Uh, then they finally come back uh, to, the, to the post activities, which includes the finalizing a log. This is usually a supervisor log of what happened, how it happened. Uh, what are the main performance stats are. Uh, the element which should also be uh, going hand in hand here is reviewing of the issues or opportunities, either with the cross shift or with their the superiors or with the crew. Um, you're basically looking at what they found, what was done, if, it, if the problem has been solved, what the solution was, everybody knows. And finally, the cross shift handover is about making sure you're setting up your, your cross shift for success. Uh, the idea being that the cross shift upcoming must know uh, what the work conditions they're getting into, uh, what 
resources they have and what they do not have. Um, if if there was a problem, you know, what was done to solve the problem? If there, the priorities have shifted, why they were shifted so the other person can be aligned and, and they can continue uh, the work. Um, next, I wanted to uh, cover quickly what the main activities of a supervisor look like and if they're valued or non-valued or waste. Let me just look at the time quickly here. Uh, so there are there are six different activities that we can, or major categories of activities we can break down a supervisor work. Direct supervision um, really is about making sure all, all the work we just talked about. It's about uh, lining up. It's about um, you know setting a going having the proper communications, doing Gemba walks, doing audits, doing. Uh, coaching and mentoring, sorry, not coaching and mentoring, that's the second, second thing, but everything which has to do with executing the plan safely and efficiently, all that happens here. Um, everything which has to do with um, raising, no, no, the, the root causing uh, or uh, assessing if the performance is up to standard or not happens here. Um, then you move on to coaching and mentoring. So this is is one of the most important piece that must we must spend, uh, set time up um, in the day of the supervisor to to do because this is where the opportunity to see a continuous improvement is going to happen. So this is any time being spent uh, of the supervisor with his crew, with the intention of um, improving their performance. Uh, either is the skill, or is the is the understanding of the standards, or is the uh, doing of a risk assessment or providing people opportunity so they can demonstrate that they've they've learned or they've they've improved their skills. Um, then the next one in direct supervision is basically uh, anything which is done to correct uh, a problem. So this was not expected, but something happens and it had to be corrected. So any of the firefighting issues um, that were that ended up during the day or during the shift, and supervisor had to get involved to solve it uh, will be part of that administration is is basically your paperwork reports attending meetings uh, anything which takes them away from doing supervisor supervision work um, travel if they're on the move from their desk from the floor wherever wherever they're going usually comes under travel there's a note here about that if they're traveling to firefight it should not be captured in the travel it should be captured actually under firefighting will be indirect supervision and then finally anything which doesn't fall under these uh, five becomes the uh, reactive problem solving so this is uh, work cannot uh, continue because we don't have the enough instructions we don't have the scale we don't have the right information we, we have to do a revert because things were not understand, understood properly, uh, or we just are waiting for something to happen. So that usually will fall into reactive problem solving. Why it's important to, to look at that and try to estimate where we are with the supervisor or day of work, because you're trying to compare this to what it should look like. Um, so the two things that we, we're, we're trying to minimize are the indirect supervisions and reactive problem solving. So those have to be the least um, time spent. Uh, admin and travel could vary depending on what kind of job you are, you have. If you're in a in a mine or underground mine or a mill, it's it's spread across quite a few kilometers, so you're going to be a lot of traveling back and forth to go see all the see uh, air work areas. But if you are on a uh, factory floor and you're in charge of two assembly lines, maybe your walking is not as much, right? Um, but it could vary. It should still be the idea is that the, the first two, the direct supervision and coaching and mentoring, should be the majority of time being spent, ideally above 50%. And then you've got a, a leadership standard work set, which is going to be adding towards continuous improvement. Biggest chunk on obviously on coaching and mentoring because that's where the opportunity is. Now, what happens if we, if supervisor must do um, indirect supervision, reactive problem solving, things that we don't want him to do? So, the reason I put the slide up is because uh, when we first go uh, to any anywhere where we're trying to implement the supervisor's leadership center work, most more people are off the view that this is where they add value because this this feels glorious, right? Like you, you're there, you have a problem, you solve that problem. Everybody was waiting for you to do something so they can go back to work. So they feel they are value added and they're doing something um, good for the company. 
but if that does not um, address the the issues properly and this, this problem is going to keep happening over and over you're just putting out the fire then that's not really a a good use of supervisor time so to go away from there what you must do is use any of the risk um rating that matrix that you may have which, which looks at the severity of a consequence of something happening and the pro likelihood probability of how often does it happen and then try to do a understanding of the things that take people supervisor away from doing the value added work which is a direct supervision and coaching and mentoring and where does it fall into so higher the risk i can still live with supervisor getting involved but then if they're getting involved the idea would be that they must identify first level root cause when they're putting out the fire they must lead the root problem solving for root cause if it's under their control and then finally communicate to the cross shift and their leadership to make sure the root cause is well understood and problems is solved the idea being high risk uh, we can get them to spend the time but then they are working towards problem solving and eventually, by doing that, you can actually move that risk to the low or the medium side, and then the supervisor should not get involved next time anyways. It should get delegated to somebody on this team. Um, I wanted to show this schematic very quickly. Uh, we're talking today about this box here, supervisor leadership standard work. There's obviously different levels of organizations have different leadership standard works which happen, but it's important to understand that the each level have their own um three elements that they must go through so in supervisor case usually they're working towards utilizing the resources that have been they've been given the resources being the operators underneath and operators are usually in charge of making sure that they are sticking to the standards and then above this level usually are, are in charge of making sure these supervisors have the resources available be it work areas be it equipment people technical services support material availability whatever that might be when you start looking at in that silos of standard standard work, then it becomes clear who has to do what and where the problem needs to get resolved. Finally, um, under the lean daily management component, this is one of the key things. What needs to go um, parallel in hand in hand is the visual controls where you identify the key uh, focus areas for each level of organization. Um, basically make the problem solving process very visible to everybody so so it should be in an area where which is um, high traffic visual to everybody anybody can come and see what the main problems we have in the organization uh, and what is being done about them and then the the other process is about making sure there are reviews in place for each level or each layer of the organization leadership where the proper escalation and proper problem solving can happen. So it will go back to something like this. So if the problem is with the utilization, maybe supervisor is the right person, but if it's with the availability, then maybe the next level, if it's with the capability, meaning interaction of different departments coming together, maybe it's the next level and so forth. Okay, um, that was my last slide. So just to wrap this up, um, we have implemented a lot of these leadership center work. Uh, and usually the first step is to start with the supervisor leadership center work because that's where the rubber hits the road. Those are the people who are in the thick of things, uh, in the line of fire. Um, so best to start there. Uh, typical improvement journey would start with a day in life of study. So you're trying to understand where they're spending the time before you can come up with a plan of improving, improving uh, or putting the right things in the standard work uh, for the supervisor. Idea being that we want supervisors to spend more and more time on direct supervision and mentor and coaching, take them away from the firefighting um and, and in development literally the leadership center work uh, focus is placed on activities and behaviors that show leading with respect uh, making associate development the central theme that's where you drive the value or, or the continuous improvement okay um i think I, I am pretty much at the end of my time so very quickly if there is any questions let me know uh, and i also have uh, some poll questions, uh, which you can find in those uh, the triangle, square, circle thing on the on the bottom right of your screen. Uh, please go ahead and answer those, and I will stick around if anybody has any questions. I think there's one question, Austin. Yep. Let oh, me go and see. Can you guide us for a little on on making the plan? But there you go. 
Yeah, so so when we talk about making the plan, um, the plan being how are we going to hit the targets that you've been given to the business unit or asset, whatever that is, that's the making of the plan that we were talking about. The, the supervisor role is to then take those targets or the plan for the business unit and then execute again, work against it. So when we're talking about, yes, they have to create daily target plans, it's really how are we going to execute the, the business plan? Right or the um, how are we going to get there? What are the single steps um, over a shift or um, over days to get to that whatever the target is for the week or for the month? And that's what we call a business plan. So that's the difference. Hopefully, I answered the question. Any other? Okay. Um, if you have no other questions, um, have a have a good rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar um, next week, next Wednesday. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Asim. Thanks, Asim. Talk to you soon. Yep. All right. Bye.